Isha Datta Shalanyascha Yatahi Oshinarashibi Yaso Vitani Tasvanam Doshyantir Iva Yakvanam Yakvanam This child will, child will be a munificent donor of charity. How did you open this page so quickly? How did you open this page so quickly? I I saw Page, page, page number is the same? No, I saw she that said it's uh, uh, chapter 12 and text 20. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last story. Spell. I can't believe it. No? <laughs> <laughs> Morning, how are you? How are you doing? Yes. Okay, though I have to read the child will be manifest in of charity and protect of the surround surrender, like the famous King Sibi of the Ushinara country. And he will expand the name and fame of his family like Bharata, the son of Mars, Yushanta. So you eat with purport? I, I would just read it myself because no need to read it. Един цар може да се прослави с благотворителността си, с жертвата и нашенията си, яги, като защитава починените си и прочие. Царят Кшатрия се гордее, че може да се защитава душите, които му се отдават. Това отношение се нарича Ишвара Баба, истинска способност на царя да закриля тези, които се нуждаят от защита. В Багавад Кита Богът призовава живите същества да му се отдадат и им обещава, че ще ги предпази от всичко. Богът е всесилен и верен на думата си и винаги закрива предана от дадените си. Царят, който е представител на Бога, трябва да се стърми в цената на всичко, да защитава от дадените си души. Махараджа Шиби, който бил цар на Ушинара, бил близък приятел на Махараджа Яйти, който успял да се издигне до райските планети заедно с него. Махараджа Чиби знал на коя райска планета ще отиде с натъсна. Тази планета е описана в Махабарата. Ади Парва, Махараджа Чиби бил толкова щедър, че искал да поотстъпи тази възможност на Яети, но той не приел. Яети е отишъл на райските планети заедно с Аштака и други велики риши. Когато се готвили да отпътуват за рая по молба на ришите, Яети описал благочестивите дейности на Шиби. Махараджа Шиби стана от член на събранието на, на Яети, на, на, Ямаха, на Ямараджа, полубога, когато обожавал. Както се потвърждава в Багава Дгита, обожателите на полубоговете отиват на планетите на полубоговете. Янти Дева врата Дева. Така Махараджа Шиби стана с път на великия авторитет на вечнавите Ямараджа, на неговата планета. Докато бил на земята, той се почул като защитник и ще да благодетел на отдалите си души. Веднъж небесният цар се превърна в птица, която преследва гълъби – Орел. А Агни, богът на огъни, се превърна в гълъб. Орелът се впусна след гълъба, който потърси спасение в скута на Махараджа Шиби. Орелът бил търнал на лов и поискал от царя да му предаде гълъба. Царят предложи да му даде някакъв друг вид месо и го помоли да не убива гълъба. Птицата ловец отказал да приеме предложението на царя, но по-късно се споразумели да вземе толкова плът от тялото на самия цар, колкото да тежал гълъбът. Царят започна да реже късове плът от тялото си и да излага на везни, докато се изравнят с теглото на гълъба. Но тази съният гълъб винаги остава по-тежък. Най-накрая, за да уравновеси везните, царят сам се качил на тях. Лобоговете останали, останали много доволни от него. Небесният цар и Богът на огъни се появили след пред царя в истинския си облик и го благословили. Девак Шинарада също възхвалява Махараджа Шиби за великите му дела и особено за благотворителността му и за това, че закрили всички. 
Махараджа Шири пожертва собствения си син, за да удовлетвори хората от царството си. И така, малкият Таракшит трябва да стане втори Шири по щедрост и по стремеж да раздава покровителство на всички. Даушанти Барата. В историята са съществували много барати, най-известни от които са баратът на Бог Рама, синът на, Шар, на цар Ришаба и синът на Махараджа Душианта. Тази, тези барати са известни в цялата вселена. Земната планета се нарича Барата или Барата Варша. В чест на цар Барата, сина на Ришаба, но според някои тя се нарича Барата заради сина на Душианта. Що се отнася до нас, ние сме убедени, че името на тази земя води началото си от управлението на Барата, сина на цар Ришаба. Преди нея тя се наричала и на Варита Варша, но непосредствено след разкачването на престола на сина на Ришаба, тази земя започна да се нарича Барата Варша. Въпреки това, Барата, синът на Махараджа Душианта, също бил много знаменита личност. Той бил син на прочутата кънставица Шакунтала. Махараджа Душианта се посрещна в богата Шакунтала и се влюбил в нея. Така бил изучен от Барата. След това, за непоклятието на Канва Муни, Махараджата забравил съпругата си Шакунтала и детето било отблизо в гората от майка си. Още като дете, барата бил толкова силен, че предизвикал на бой лъвове, лъвовете и слоновете и се сражавал с тях, както малките деца си играят с котките и кучетата. Детето бил силно много повече от съвременния тардан, затова лишите в гората го наричали Сарва Давама. Този на когото се подчиняват всички. За Махараджа Барата се говори подробно в Ади Карма на, Маха, на Махабарата. В пандирите, пандавите или коаривите Понякога също са наричани барата, защото са родени в династия на прочутия Махараджа Барата, сина на цар Душианта. Има ни шелтер. Да, да бъде на подслуване. И Махарадж ще би стайл по начина, по който го прави Махарадж Шиба. Ние на това се надяваме от лидерите в нашето общество. Да пожертват всичко. Съмъжетата е много сериозна. Ние пожертваме определени неща, Нека намерим пример за саможертвата на Сутин. Кой е пожертвал нещо заради някого друго? Може да кажем, че ако, ако живота ти е в риска заради някой друг, това е потенциална саможертва, защото нашия живот е застрашен. Друга саможертва е да се следва четирите регулиращи принципа. Ама това не е много голяма съмжетва. Особено за някои. Спомням си Сита. Майка Сита, тя беше много забавна. Хорете презенци. Тя казваше, не ям месо, защото ми става лошо от него. So I don't take drugs because I feel really bad. Казваше също не приемам опорчи за това, защото те ви карали се чувствам много зле. I don't gamble because I always lose. Не залагам, защото винаги губя. And I don't have illicit sex because there's no one to have it with. И не правим такова на стег, защото нямам с кого. Това е 
такое such a great roar of laughter in the temple. <laughs> so the four regulative principles are the basic uh, sacrifices a devotee makes to start his spiritual life. Actually, the principles of becoming human. By Srila Prabhupada's standards. And if we see that there's birds like the stork, or animals like the pingvin, which are faithful their whole lifetime to their partner. It's very surprising, no? Especially in the pingvins, because they all look the same. <laughs> when the pingvins, they can only know each other by the sound of the voice. That's what the pingvin scientists say. <laughs> I never spoke with a pingvin about the topic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even in the storks, it's pretty hard to, to know one from the other. But they're living a very faithful life the whole, the whole lifetime. They fly here and there, always stay together. <coughs> so this is another sacrifice. And there's a sacrifice of chanting the holy name. I mean, that's not a real sacrifice either. Right? Or is it? Yes, it is a sacrifice. You have to sacrifice your time. And you also have to sacrifice your ego. My Lord, please let me be an instrument of your love. Gospel to the instrument of your When you say that ten times, you get bored unless it's really from the heart. And Mahamantra has this very special power. Is the music or the, the song which has been composed in the greatest variety of any songs in the world. And it, is the, it is the song which has captured the hearts of all. Even George Harrison, when he composed My Sweet Lord, Lord. Lord. He, 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 he didn't know that he was composing the song which is going to be heard more in the whole planet than any other song. Even so many years after the song is being uh, published, it is still the most requested song on the radio stations. She could say he, he really <laughs> hit on the, on the point, no? And <laughs> it's Hare Krishna Mahamantra. <coughs> so who else is doing science sacrifice? Is it the story of Maharaj Shivi? It was a, it was a test the demigods put on a very good king. 
Because the pigeon came to take shelter. And the eagle was right after the pigeon. And it arrived. And the eagle said, My dear king, I'm a meat eater. It is my natural right. It's my natural necessity to eat meat. So you're giving shelter to this pigeon. What about giving shelter to me? I'm also a member of your of your uh, kingdom. So Mar the Maharaj was was taxed what to do. The pigeon says, please don't give me to the eagle. <laughs> the eagle said, you provide me food. I almost had the food ready. <laughs> and the only thing he settled on was on meat of the weight of the pigeon. <laughs> From the body of the king. And the king agreed. And when he put some flesh on the on the on the scale, the pigeon on one. The pigeon was so heavy. Finally he had to sit himself completely in the other side of the scale. Then the scale came equal. So he had to give himself to be eaten by the by the eagle. So then he considered that a special test. And he agreed. So this is a total sacrifice, no? Then the eagle and the pigeon revealed themselves to be demigods who had just come to test the king. This is, this is so amazing story. And it's right there in the Srimad Bhagavatam. So now it's a question what else we have to sacrifice. Sankitanya. It's a sacrifice. You approach one person after the other in the world. And you ask them, please find out about Lord Krishna. <coughs> My Guru Dev has requested me to go out and tell everybody about Krishna. He has told me. <coughs> Give the greatest treasure of love to the people who are needing. So please be so kind and take this book and read it. Mm. It is a sacrifice. For the sake of the people. Not for me. I may do the sacrifice. Because when you offer somebody something, they say, no, I'm not interested. Don't disturb me. Something like this. Sometimes they're not very friendly. But you should still keep being friendly. So it's a great sacrifice. To go out on Sankitan. Every day. Or in every circumstance. But because of this, we meet so many wonderful people. If you don't do it, they will never meet you. They will never really do anything. So it's a very laudable sacrifice. And the sacrifice which our Guru Dev Prabhupada did personally. 
жертвата, която нашия гуру Дев Павлопада лично е направил. He published back to Godhead magazine and distributed it personally. Той е публикувал и да, списанието Back to Godhead и стан го разпространява. That's why he is our great spiritual master. Ама он вишна да дай кръщна песна, като ли си на какъвто да дам да свами и ти дам. Но мъстие са да свърти деви и горавани причалини, не вишеша сунявани паскатя и затарени. So he is, he sacrificed his old age in Vindavan. Той пожелетвал неговата напреднала възраст на Вендаван. For what? За какво? To go on a boat to America. Where he knew nobody. With two boxes of books. Which are so heavy. It's not imaginable. When you know America. Nobody will pick up a box unless you give him ten bucks. So I don't know what Prabhupada did when he arrived. He without money in the in the harbor. Of Boston. And he had to take these big box boxes of books down. And sixty-eight year at sixty-eight age. Hmm. Only this, the first moment, how to get there, you know, you have no money, nobody's going to pick up these boxes for you. And he started to move around with these boxes. That's sacrifice. And then he went and sold those books. To pay some rent. So it's, it's very hard to imagine the sacrifice. Because sacrifice is is something beautiful. Sacrifice is our life. Because this is a way to get closer to Krishna. What are the what are the sacrifices are there? To cook is a sacrifice. To be in the kitchen is a sacrifice. Especially in the hot summer. It's so warm. And just to provide some nice meal for your family and friends, you are in the kitchen. You're doing sacrifice. Listening to others is a sacrifice. Instead of just talking, talking your own little mental things. You say, yes, you can talk to me. I want to know how you are. I want to know how I can help you. This is also a sacrifice. Cleaning is also a sacrifice. That's why lazy bums usually don't even like to take a shower. Hmm? There's some cultures that would never bathe. It wasn't part of their culture. <laughs> But they invented the perfume. <laughs> for for understandable reasons. <laughs> so sacrifices of many many smaller and bigger proportions. Or to live in a temple. That's a sacrifice. No more privacy. Now you just, when you want to sleep, you lie down. That's all. It's fine. You get up. Roll up your sleeping bag. No bed. Mm. Now you have to wait in line at the shower. 
А после трябва да се чакаш ли да на душа? Защото има някой друг вътре. И се бави. А пък ти бързаш. Това е съмжекта също. Това е съмжекта също. И си иска само жертва, ако имаш проблем с корема. Да живееш в общност също е само жертва. Да се събирате и да разискате различни теми, това също е. Истагости. Нарича се Истагости. И те са само жертва. Не е толкова добре, ако живеете са култура. Не е толкова голяма, ако отдадените сте образовани, културни. А това значи да не се карат. Да не се карат пред другите. На саме те също не се карат, но може да се изяснят. Има две различни неща. Неразбиране и различно мнение. None of the two are reason to fight. И двете не са причина да се скарваш с някакъв. Because misunderstanding have to be cleared out. Защото неразбирателството трябва да се изчисти. And different opinions. А различните мнения. Have to be negotiated. Да се разискват. And if negotiation is becoming difficult. А ако разискването става трудно. Because you have two difficult characters involved. Защото имаме два много трудни характера включени. Then you have to find out if the two difficult characters have somebody above them, which both of them have regard for. И тогава трябва да намерим дали тези два мъртви души имат някого над тях, когато и двамата зачитат. So they are a little bit two different characters. Защото имаме различни, двама различни души. Ready to jump on each other. Готови да се вкопчат един в друг. Like fighters. Като бойци. But then they go and they ask the senior. No, после отива при повише от тях. And then they go goes okay. И знам какво се случва. So solve the problem. Крайен е проблем. Как се решени? So from that point of view, you can understand how valuable it is to have a senior who we like and and respect. Аз това е важно да разберем колко необходимо да имаме някой повише, кога ту харесваме и уважаваме. That is really. Some great gift. Because if you don't have anybody senior to you, and you are in conflict with others, is in conflict with others. There's no solution. So therefore, why in previous times there's always been the circle of the elders? And in addition to the spiritual master, there's always a circle of the elders. I like grandfathers. And grandmothers full of love they take care of. Okay, children, don't get agitated. <laughs> Life has much bigger problems than the one you're having right now. <laughs> so first lesson of this problem today. Smile! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Because tomorrow it will be worse. <laughs> <laughs> so the elders they know how to handle things. Because they're the well wishes of everyone. And they also understand that egos sometimes get obsessed. This is also also called stubbornness. Some people they have this. They are so stubborn. If anything goes against their way of seeing things, they become agitated. And then they go, 
and if they instill the things go worse, they scream. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> and if that still doesn't help them, <laughs> they threaten. <laughs> and if still things are not solved, <laughs> they offer to fight. <laughs> So these people with this type of character, it is better at that moment to leave them alone. <sighs> yes, yes, yes. You do as you do. Don't, don't get agitated. Later you talk with them. When they are relaxed. <laughs> this is a recommendation for relationships. Because the ego is like this. Like there's many people, they know how to speak, but they don't know how to listen. They just don't know how to listen. They always... <laughs> even, even, even if you answer their question, they cannot listen to your answer. Looks like something is broken there inside. <laughs> Because it's a it's an ability to listen. Because after listening, you have to put it into the thought processing uh, area. You have to process whether you actually understood what the other said. Then you put that into your evaluation. What does it mean for you? So first, what did he mean to say? Then next department, what does it mean for me? Then in the next department, what will I say to him? Or what will I do based on what I realized? They're mental processes. And they don't work for all people. Uh -huh. Just like some people, they, they have good eyes and some don't. I can read without glasses. But far it's blurred. Other persons they need glasses to read. And far they can see. <coughs> so we are not all the same. So some the mental process is also not the same with everybody. You could say obstinate and see is a kind of a traumatic disease. You know, child psychology is a very interesting subject. That's what the psychologists do these days. You have, you have a problem? Oh, you must have been mistreated in childhood. And it may actually be true. In in the in the Vedic psychology, you never hand a child to another person like this. Because this movement means rejection. Hey, I don't want you. To go away. Oh. This for a child is traumatic. So in the Vedic psychology, if you want to pass a child to another person, you have to go with the child all the way to the person that it touches your body and the other person's body, and the child becomes aware of another person <laughs> who is there, and then you give the child, and it is it's a it's a loving transfer. Ако искаш да дадеш дете на някой друг, трябва да се приближиш до него, да го докоснеш, така детето ще усети и вече може да го подадеш. And what's happening to our children? И какво става с нашите деца? We just put them to some strangers in some kita. Даваме ги на някакви непознати. We don't even know what's happening to them. Но не знаем какво се случва с тях. And all day they are subjected to the most diverse experiences. 
without the mummy close by to take care. Of course, if they are lucky, then they study in the flying classroom. <laughs> and they'll have a real good time. But uh, sometimes the, the kindergartens are not that good. And the school is also not that good. So we have a traumatic upbringing. So the, uh, the human psyche is, is very sensitive. <coughs> Sometimes when people deal with, with, with each other, you, you see that they are very gross with each other. Harsh. Harsh. Grubi. Grubi. Uh, but they themselves are very sensitive. If you say anything about them, they go like... <laughs> if you say something like, I didn't like the way you spoke the other day. Oh, he, he doesn't love me. He doesn't love me. Immediately they overreact. There is a door. In the door is relaxed. <laughs> the most popular sitting place. This is a natural instinct of keeping the escape route open. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what is the next thing he's going to say? <laughs> <laughs> So, so I get run out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, so sacrifice for others is a very good thing. It's indicative of spiritual maturity. It's the basis. Where are we going? What do we want to accomplish? Oh, I forgot another sacrifice. Agriculture. Come on, put your hands in the ground. No, I don't want to make my hands dirty. What do you mean dirty? This dirt is producing your food. The ground is not as dirty as your inside. <laughs> the ground is not dirty at all. Worship the ground. Touch the ground. That's very difficult today. Here we have a plastic carpet. And under the plastic carpet, tiles. And out there, there's cement. And then you go around there, there's another, everything is plastered over with something. <coughs> and when you finally find some earth, <coughs> then that's where all the dogs are pooing <laughs> and peeing. <laughs> so you don't feel very comfortable of touching it. <laughs> I mean, it's a luxury to touch Mother Earth. <laughs> Especially if you, if you live in a place like Sofia. <laughs> mm -hmm. You have to go almost out in the countryside so I can touch Earth. So the farmers who are touching Earth every day for growing our food, they are doing sacrifice. <coughs> but it's again, it's a, it's a thing. It's a sacrifice which is not really a sacrifice. In the hippie times, we had the promotion. Free drugs, free sex. <laughs> so, then Prabhupada answered. Yes. Free from drugs and free from sex. 
<laughs> so we agree. We agree. We should be free. <laughs> so, therefore, the 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 austerities or the the sacrifices, they are not really that much sacrifice. It's much more sacrifice to live in a city than to live in the country. But the people in the country, they want to live in the city. They think that the people in the city, they are most fortunate. That's why there's so many empty farmhouses in Bulgaria. Where are the children? They are gone. And who can cultivate the land now? Nobody there. So in this way, <laughs> we can see that the, this world is full of necessity of sacrifice. Sacrifice is, is a price to pay for something higher. There's many, many examples of this in life. I have only given the most basic ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sacrifice means to get up early and not be sleepy. Oh no, I like this. Getting up? <coughs> taking a shower? <coughs> Is it hot water? <coughs> no, no hot water. <coughs> Only cold. <coughs> oh no. <coughs> so much sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a sacrifice either. <laughs> Actually, uh, health advisors say a cold shower is one of the most healthiest things to start a day. <laughs> Hot water takes the energy out from the body. <laughs> and cold water closes the pores and you get it, all the energy. <laughs> That's why we have to always go and uh, and have the association of, of those who make tapasya. <laughs> those who accept some sacrifice for others. You need a chair, Prabhu? No? No? No. Okay. <laughs> So, therefore, uh, we are following those who make sacrifice. <laughs> Maharaj Shibi is one example. <laughs> and there are so many others. Arjuna, Bar Maharaj, Bharata. Uh, there are so many examples given in the scriptures of sacrifices made by great souls. <laughs> and you could say, Everything Prabhupada requests us to do is some kind of sacrifice. And by accepting sacrifice, we can advance in spiritual life. And we can have time. Like for example, sannyas or brahmachari life. That is a sacrifice. <laughs> and grihasta life. That's also a sacrifice. <laughs> the grihasta is sacrificing himself to dedicate and to take care of one family. <laughs> and the sannyasi or the brahmachari making the sacrifice of being able to serve many people all the time. <laughs> Because, because this is the uh, this is the sacred, sacred 
conclusion of the sacred, sacred sexual unity. That this is giving life. And as such, it must be protected sacredly. Because it is, uh, it is making you a father or a mother. And you ask the children what they think about that. The children are immediately claiming property. You are my father. You have to look after me. Yes, now you are my, you are my uh, guardian. And of the mother? Mommy. <laughs> mommy. My mommy. My mommy. My mommy. There you go. <laughs> no. So, the child claims. <laughs> my mother, my father. <laughs> if you don't allow this to the child, the child will be very sad. <laughs> I was once very shocked. <laughs> I was in Bogota in our temple. And I was in the balcony chanting. Mahamantra in the morning. And then my eyes, I'm looking to the street. And they have these manholes for the underground channels. And sometimes they steal the cover. And under there, there's the huge pipes. So, I'm chanting there and I see some children of six to eight years old. They're climbing out from this hole. It cannot be true. <laughs> Not possible. They're living down there in the in the stoops. The street children. It's a long story. Anyway, I immediately went down to the to the road. <laughs> and I started talking to them. And I said, listen. We have a nice farm. You could go there and help us. And we sent you to school. And they looked at me like I was some very weird stranger. Well, I must have looked like that as well. Was this guy coming from Mars or what? <laughs> but I got to talk with them. He said, no, we don't accept anybody senior as authority. We don't want to go into any disciplinary, disciplinary system. They learn to live without parents at six, seven, eight years. And they already had their social structure for Structure of survival. Actually, here in this purple, Prabhupada gives the example of this, the, the, this, who was this king, the way he said Tarsan? Bard, yeah. Bard was in the forest, no? Yeah, he said Bard was abandoned, no? So again, okay, somebody who was brought up by animals. For famous, famous story of Mowgli. Mm -hmm. So there, are, there are cases like you, you are formed by the environment. You adjust to the environment. There are many cases where animals have shown compassion to. Human children. 
Но има много случаи, в които животните са вкарали с предание към човешки деца. Animals can sense whether humans are babies. Животните могат да почувстват кога хората са детски щица. It's very intelligent. It's very amazing to see how much intelligence is there in the different species. Just a few years ago, one gorilla became very famous. There was in a zoo in the United States. And a little toddler of two, or two, two and a half years just walking, he fell into the gorilla cage. And you know, the human beings are mad, no? So, so they, they screamed, the mother screamed, Ah, my child fell in the, into the gorilla cage, no? And, and now they're like, kill them all, kill them all, so that they don't harm them much. And this gorilla, this huge gorilla lady, <laughs> she walked over to the kid. And she took the kid in her arms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then she walked over to the door where the where the guardians or the, the, the big doorkeepers of the humans come in. And she waited for somebody to come and open the door to get <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So this is one example. I can tell you many, many stories. If you have studied animal psychology, there's plenty of animals. Just a few days ago, I was in Palma, Mallorca. And we were in a very big house. Big house, huge. And with an L shape. And we were sitting in the in the courtyard. <coughs> and one elderly devotee. Over sixty and very sick. He walked away. While we were sitting there. And uh, one of the devotees then. She had a dog, which was on the line. She had a little dog and a dog. And, a dog. and so, all of a sudden, the dog started barking. And you look at the dog, why is the dog barking? And then nobody reacted. Uh, the dog was pulling on the, on the line. And still nobody really reacted. The dog just made a jump and ran away. The, the line out of the hand of the, of the So the girl went after her dog. In the next moment it turned out that the dog was went all around the, the house, the big house. And on the other side, the elderly devotee had collapsed. He had some, some severe attack. And the dog went right to him and was like barking and licking him. And and then the devotees were called and actually the doctor later said his life was saved by this dog. So sometimes we even feel it right with us. The, the sense of the animals they have is much, 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 much more than you have. Few people can imagine what's going on in the animal kingdom. <coughs> the animal kingdom is just as wonderful as all the creation. And if you don't feel that, there is a saying. 
If humans think that animals cannot think, then animals have to feel that humans have no feelings. Because animals do think and they do feel because they are our brothers. It doesn't matter whether it's a chicken or whether it's an elephant or a giraffe. They have a lot of fear and they are very keen to protect each other. You can, you can see that, for example, uh, there's, there's, there's YouTube, YouTube uh, pictures where lions attack an antelope and then the other antelopes turn around and start attacking the lion and saving the, saving the antelope. It's many, many things like that. It's not that they, <coughs> they make sacrifice for each other. They take risks for each other. It's not something, oh, we humans, we are so great, we do that. It's very, very much a, a trademark of feeling. Sacrifice. Of course we must make sacrifice. Sacrifice is a quality. A quality of life. And that's what we got to learn from Srila Prabhupada. Otherwise they tell you, you make sacrifice for the country. You go and, and have yourself killed because the, the country's leaders tell you, go out and kill all these people. They are against our country. And then the people are doing it. That's the most crazy thing about it. Instead of collectively saying no, you are out of your mind. If you want, kill yourself. <laughs> but please, but please leave us alone. Because we don't want to be killed, neither do we want to kill. Now, will you stop your nonsense? <laughs> if, you have, if you have an issue with somebody, then sit down and talk it out with him. Or if you want to make a competition, <laughs> we can make like a little game and you can make competing who wins the game, then he, he, he'll, he'll be the winner and you don't have to send all your children to die in war. И този, който спечели играта, е победител на нея. Нужно да умират толкова много хора във вина. So sacrifice for a higher purpose, for a higher cause, is very valuable. Много е ценно да правим си на жертва за една по-висша цел. We should do sacrifice. Трябва да го правим. Every day. Всеки ден. All the time. Пъс цяло това е. And of all the sacrifices we know, и от всички са жертви, които ние знаем, the Sankitan Yagya is the best. And it has an additional beautiful side effect. It maintains our temples. By the Sankitan we make new friends. By the Sankitan new people are getting information about Krishna and love. By the sacrifice of the Sankitan more people join our family. And if somebody joins our family, that's another sacrifice. How many places you can go and say, I want to live with you? 
Think it over. Where can you go and knock at the door? I want to live with you. What are the conditions? Hmm? I want to live with you. I want to learn from you. I want to share with you. The doors are closed. <laughs> Even for people who are homeless, who don't know where to sleep, they often don't find such a place where, where they can just participate. That's why they have to live, sleep in some emergency shelter or under bridges. We have such people here. So, so giving shelter and taking shelter. What is the price to pay? Sacrifice. People are not willing to make much sacrifice. They want a lot and they want to give less. Preferably, they want everything and give nothing. That's called the material world. And the spiritual world? That you want to give everything and you don't want anything. Mm -hmm. You must have heard the story that, of how somebody came uh, to ask, what is hell? Can you please show me hell? Then the mystic said, yes, come with me. I know how we can look at hell. So, hell, there was a very, very big pot <laughs> full of kitri. <laughs> and the people were sitting around the pot. The, the kitri was very hot. And they had in their hand <coughs> very big spoons. So they could get a little bit kitri. But they tried to get it into the mouth with that big spoon. But they couldn't reach the, the mouse with the spoon. So all of them were trying to eat and could not eat. So that is that is hell. He said then what is heaven then? And then the Rishi said, okay, come, let's look at heaven. <coughs> and in heaven, there was the same pot and the same people around and also the long spoons. <laughs> so they were taking the kitchen and giving it to somebody else <laughs> who was far. And in this way, they would all feed. Just give you a little idea. <coughs> in the material world, everybody wants to be happy just by himself. He tries everything to get this. Buying toys and other things. But they can never feel happy. There is no happiness by having things and using things. And in the temple, you are living with many people in very austere condition. But you are trying to please each other and going out to please the others. And when a new devotee comes, 
That's a great pleasure. Why? And a great austerity. <laughs> now we have to share our living space and everything with another individual. So, where is he going to wash his clothes? Where is he going to put his stuff? How is he going to eat? How is he going to sleep? And what is he willing to do? What ability he has? Oh, then you get to know the whole new chaotic individual. Because don't forget, we are all very chaotic beings. No, no, excuse me, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> Any similarity with real people is purely coincidental. <laughs> But uh, usually people have some problems. <laughs> and some have two problems. <laughs> and some have three problems. <laughs> and some have so many problems you can't count. <laughs> and then you're living with them. <laughs> For free. <laughs> it wasn't your it wasn't your karma. Now they call it mercy. <laughs> Because if you're born in a family of a father who is a drunkard, well, you say, well, that was my karma. And whoever has had a father drunkard, uh, he knows what kind of karma is that. Not a good news. <laughs> But when somebody new joins a temple, whose karma is that? And he's not And he's not arriving as a small little cute baby. <laughs> he's probably arriving like an old gru grumpy guy. <laughs> of course, usually people when they arrive they try to make themselves look like pretty good. <laughs> But after they are there for three months, they can't hide anymore who they are. <laughs> so then you have that chaos there living with you. <laughs> that is sacrifice. That's what Prabhupada taught us to make sacrifice. Just like in a hospital. Sick people must come to the hospital. So every new sick person means big problem. Any new sick person coming, doctors, nurses, all have to go and look at the case. Maybe he needs urgent surgery. But at least we have to understand what is his problem and how to take care of him. And hospital means you have to lie in a bed. So who's going to bring food to him? Who's going to make sure he doesn't pee in the bed? So, so hospitals and all these, all these places, they're places of sacrifice. But in an ashram, <coughs> it's so unique that the sacrifice actually transforms people completely in their whole way of thinking and, and outlook. We experience that with our volunteers. Hardly any of them comes as a strict vegetarian. But, but after they are spending two weeks with us in the volunteer program, 90% say I'm a vegetarian from now on. Because this is that you have association. 
It touches you, something happening. The austerity on some its renunciation. <laughs> like uh, when you leave a place. It's an austerity. You, you, you separate from somebody you love. This is also a sacrifice. To go somewhere else. To do something else. You have to give up something to make something new. You can't do everything at the same time. So this is this is our our task. Following the great sages like that who actually sacrificed themselves. Make a list of the sacrifice you want to make. To please Krishna. To please Srila Prabhupada. And to increase your transcendental family. Because we won't live together hundreds and thousands. Don't be afraid. If you live together with 30, 40 is enough. Why? Well, we, if we, after we have 30, 40 devotees, we open two more temples. Hmm? No need that we all sit on top of each other. There's lots of space to do lots of things in this world. And Krishna consciousness is for every town and village. So in every little corner we can we can go and start making a little farm. In Chakrima? You begin with the word in Chakrima? Huh? You were a volunteer. There was a piece of desert. Nothing, only only sand. And the devotees started to make something there. And now it is a thriving community. But it would not have happened without the sacrifice of many, many devotees for many, many years. So why not make another Chakrima? Anywhere. Anyone. Just do it. Of course, you do it. Krishna also provides the facility. In the case of Chakrima, Lima is a terrible city. It's very difficult to imagine a city as terrible. It's in the desert, full of industries, with millions of people living on dry mountains, no water. <coughs> when you see, when you look at Lima, you only pray for a tree. <laughs> it's unbelievable. How human beings can settle in such a place. And the river, which goes through there, it's called River Rimak. When you look into that, you repent of having gone there. <laughs> There's just garbage on both sides and black birds, scavengers. 
Да. Съдържаш ли букуци? Да. Ядяш ли? Кой ще се храна с букука? Do you think, what am I doing here? But I came to Lima first time 1979. And the very first time I went there, I met so many wonderful people that I got stuck. In this place I got stuck. That's a long time ago now. But when we started the temple in Lima, I immediately decided this is not a place to live. Let us go out of the city and find the place where we can have some countryside. But when you go to the north or to the south of Lima for one hour, you only see desert. Not one tree. You Bulgarians don't know what that means. You have, you have, you have no idea what is a desert. Hmm? Maybe you have snow peaks. There's no trees up there. Anyway, after one hour drive, I saw there was a little bit of agriculture fields. Because there was another river from the mountains coming down to the ocean. Lima is right on the ocean. So, <coughs> then there was a German devotee. And he donated me $5,000. So I looked, what can I get for $5,000 for the devotees? And we found this little piece in, in Chakrima. There was a 90-year-old man. He was living alone there on this piece of land. He, he didn't have papers. He could hardly move. So we talked to him. We were looking for some land. Oh, he said, I can sell you mine. <laughs> How are you going to sell your land? <laughs> oh, very, very easy. He says, you give me $5,000 and then you give me food until I die. Mm. You know, it was like, we thought, wow, it's a special place. At least, at least there is some, some cultivation in this area possibly. And that's where the sacrifice started. The devotees did so much sacrifice. Living there for years with hardly any food. The only thing which grows there easily is sweet potatoes. So they would eat sweet potatoes in the morning, sweet potatoes in the noon, and sweet potatoes in the night. <laughs> She lived there. How long? Six or seven years. Six or seven years you lived in Chakima? <laughs> so she can tell the story better than me. <laughs> And every time you wanted to have something, you had to go to Lima. But in order to go to Lima, first you had to climb a mountain. But the mountain was only sand. So you sink in like he to here when you walk. If you see Chakrimar today, is there a Vrinda magazine? I have also 
pictures which they've made in an album. Oh, but those are here in the magazine. <coughs> Anyhow, this is just an example. Sacrifice is, is value. Yeah, the Avarshna medicine. It's a very valuable thing to make sacrifice. This is what it, what it looks now. Mm. And on this picture you only see the yoga planetarium. You don't see the full beauty of Chakrima. When we got there, there was not one green thing to see. But with great painstaking efforts, because it's right on the ocean, so, so you get the very salty ocean air blowing in. <coughs> Anyhow, nowadays this place is the, the main meeting place for the devotees of South America. Any questions? <coughs> yes. Yes. Sir, I have one question that I speak of Bulgarian because... You speak Bulgarian, she tells me. Yes. Uh, Approximately... Yeah, I'm still in bridge with the Stushiki. That's the chance of the class. I've come to the conclusion that the Stushiki Стигам до извода, че Хари Кришна Маха Мантра не е достатъчно за живота. Далеч не е. Хари Кришна Маха Мантра не знат за сакрифайци на Хари Кришна Маха Мантра. Това е живота, че живота е по-голяма жертва, отколко си Мантра на живота. Това е, когато си живота, че живота е по-голяма жертва, отколко си Мантра на живота. О, Господи, пожалуйста, дай ми бъде инструмент за живота. So this is a <coughs> as also, also oh my lord please engage me in your service. So some devotee is chanting Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. When the temple commander comes. Quickly, quickly come and help in the kitchen. No, 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 I'm chanting Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah, but what did you chant? Uh, I was chanting, please engage me in the Okay, go to the kitchen. <laughs> Service has arrived. <laughs> so, so, I think it's a very practical. So the holy name of Krishna is glorified as an all-powerful, merciful uh, ingredient. But also, it is uh, <coughs> the entry to the world of dedication. <coughs> <coughs> and is it as the Maha <coughs> connects us with the world of dedication? <coughs> Maybe the mantra will not be the most important every time. <coughs> like when I talk about the philosophy, <coughs> I'm not only saying Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <coughs> <coughs> no, I have to think other things. <coughs> because this is part of our spiritual existence. So this is all a com compendium of circumstances. Like when Prabhupada started his movement, he taught us to only chant Mahamantra. That's enough. Is it enough? Of course it's enough. Because Prabhupada said. But if you go to India, to the temples, they don't chant much Mahamantra. Why? 
because they chant all these songs. Sometimes they sit and chant songs for three hours, four hours, one song after the other. And while they are chanting the songs in their language, they learn the philosophy and the whole, whole thing. Of course, they always chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Nitai Gora, Hare Bol. So they have a few things like concluding mantras. So, but they all belong to each other. They don't contradict. They don't compete with each other. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he became famous for giving us this Mahamantra. And to turn it around. Because in the Kali Santara Upanishad, who, the mantra is mentioned Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari. Even today in India, some people chant it the other way around. But Mahaprabhu turned it around, says Hari Krishna. And he also gave a different interpretation. A very, a very deep, a deep interpretation of the Mahamantra. Where Sri Mata Radharani holds the supreme position. And by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy, this mission goes on. Chanting Japa is very important. We should be very enthusiastic to chant and to pray. And should also be very enthusiastic to serve. These two should be connected. You now we are all invited for Prashant. Well, it's less 10 o'clock already. <laughs> <laughs>